In this video, I'm going to construct what I'm referring to as a universal reading light. And by universal, I mean that you can use it in several different ways and you can build it with several different options. First, let's discuss mounting. This can be mounted either flush mount or shadow box mount. In this particular one, I've shadow box mounted. And what I mean by that is that there are standoffs that raises it from the surface. In the flush mount version you have to cut a hole behind here to allow for all the electronics and in the shadow box version as I show here everything is above board and you don't have to cut a hole into your wall other than the mounting holes. And I'm going to demonstrate all the different options. The shadow box option has a light switch under here that when you turn it on it becomes like a night light and that's called the halo. To turn the reading lights on you just turn the switch on and then you can dim the lights. And then in the remote option you see the lights aren't on but the LED comes on and that tells you you have remote control. So with the remote if I depress button A the lights turn on, button B the lights turn off. And like all my projects, I have a web page that I intend to be used in conjunction with the video when doing the project. And you can see that web page here. And if you follow the link in the video, it will send you to the web page. And as we look at the web page, here's a PDF that you'll want to download. And the PDF has the actual construction details. It uh, has a schematic, has a page index, and that should go over the different options that are available. And we have an economy option, which means you don't even need a circuit board to build this. The base option provides the base functionality of the light, and all the other options are added to it. The shadow box option adds a standoff so that you don't need a flush mount it. And there's a halo option without a remote, a remote option without the halo, or the halo option with the remote, and finally, just some notes on a parallel operation. And as you go through the web page in the video, you'll understand what these are. And that's why I call this universal, because you can build it in several ways. For example, how to construct a main board. It shows where all the parts go and in what order to solder the parts in. Potentiometer programming. Uh, then we go into the halo board construction and so on. So it's really quite a bit of information here. And again, here's some information about the different options. Here's a bill of materials. And you'll see the option here. So all the ones in white are for the base option. The blue adds the shadow box, which is just one part. The green adds a halo option. Red, the remote option. And the remote plus halo are some additional components. This shows you the different LED type fixtures that I built this for and where to get them. Some notes on the LED fixtures. Here's a video on modifying the fixtures and a cutout that is required for flush mounting. In this photo, I'm showing you what it looks like with the Type 1 light fixtures. And the Type 2 fixture, this is the one I used in the prototype. The Type 3 LED fixture. And finally, the Type 4 LED fixture. The Type 1 and Type 2 LED fixtures need to be modified slightly by replacing the LED inside and removing a resistor. The Type 3 and Type 4 LED fixtures can be used as is. To modify the Type 1 and Type 2 LEDs, I've created a video just for that task. And you can get to that video by clicking in the icon in the upper right hand corner here or by going to the web page. The parts layout I have here are all the possible parts that you may need when you build your particular version of the reading light. Now this does not include, of course, the reading lights themselves. Not all of these parts will be used. Depends on the version. Again, consult the build materials for which parts you'll need for the version that you want to build. I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step assembly instruction. I'm going to kind of just highlight it and then give you the information that might be a little bit confusing. We're going to build the full version, which is the base unit plus the halo option 
and the shadow box option and the remote option. So I'm going to build the whole thing. So I just realized that if you're not building the full version, some of this may not be applicable to what you're going to do. And on the aluminum plate, I've designed it so that it will come with smaller holes here. And that's so that you can flush mount it. If you want a shadow box mount it, you will need to enlarge the holes to 19 64ths of an inch in diameter, which you can either drill out or ream them out with the tool that you see here. These are the standoffs for the shadow box, and they're a little bit larger in diameter. And they're kind of cool. They're designed for glass, and they're quite fashionable. And when you take them apart, they do have a couple washers here that are kind of a nylon or rubberized thing that would go on the glass. And you can use these if you want. But the way these work, you have to take a screw, and this is just a standard screw you may find in an RV. And I had to grind down the outside here, that's why it's shiny, because it wants to fit into here. And so you see, you would screw this in to the hole, and then when you're done, you put this plate on, and then you put this on the plate, and that would capture everything. And we have one circuit board, this is the main board which holds the dimmer driver and the remote and here is the dimmer driver very small and it will fit in here and then this will mount to the back side these five are for the halo and again if you don't want to use the halo you can save yourself money by not having to have this board and I also have an economy version which doesn't even require the circuit board and it is just basically the only function is a dimmer and it uses this one and this dimmer is the same as this one except that this has wires coming out of it and even includes a potentiometer for the dimmer where this one has to be wired into a circuit board otherwise they're identical now I'm not going to show you how to build the economy version in this video but if you go to my website and if you look at my documentation, I'll have all the documentation on how to build the economy version. When you order these boards, they come minimum three of each. And we need two of each, so you will have one spare of each board left over. The two long boards are identical. And the two short boards have an option to make one side A and one side B. So what you want to do is mark on this board A and B. Now when you order your boards they'll be slightly different than these because these are prototypes and I've made a couple improvements since I've ordered these. So you want to use this as a template and we've already located the bolts from the standoffs here. So we simply want to put one of these on each side with the ears facing out that way. And I'm actually putting pressure to hold these boards in. And then when you put these boards in, they should just fit snugly. They don't fit, you know, you may have to sand the ends down just a little bit. But these boards should fit in here real nice. We actually have a jumper and they're labeled A to A and C to C. And they're in all four corners. And that's what makes a circuit from one board to the other. And one thing to make this task slightly easier is I've bent a U-shape like a staple. And that goes into these end pins like that. There is no connection to them power-wise. They're just there to help hold the board together. Probably do these first. And so you can see I've got the pin on the outside. And I also have one on the inside but on the production board, I only have one, and I've made these a little bit wider. And so when we're done, we want it to look like this. And then we should just take our meter and measure across here between A and C to make sure we don't have any shorts. And now we've pulled the board off, and I mean, it's, you know, not too bad. I mean, we should still consider it a little bit fragile. We have designated one side A and one side B. And on the A side, we have to short two pins across here. And they'll be in a slightly different location uh, on the production board. 
So just look at the instructions and it will show you the difference. And so we just want to make a little solder bridge here. Now on the B side, we do not want to do that. So the next step is to put in some LEDs. And when you take them apart, you'll see on the bottom there's a little triangle. And then the top, there's a little green mark on these particular ones. And that's not the case with all of them. Well, the little triangle aligns with the little triangle on the LEDs on the board. On these side boards, they all point in the same direction. And on the end boards, they are in the opposite direction. And if you go to my website, you'll find a chart that shows the resistor value for these LEDs. And there are several options. I want this thing to act like a night light, so I don't want these LEDs to be too bright. And for my chart, I'm going to use 4.7 kilo ohm resistors, which is going to give me about a 20% brightness. So now we can test it. So we go ground on the B side to 12 volts on the A side. And there we go. All of our LEDs are lit. And we've also added a switchboard. And it, all it does is just add an on-off switch to the assembly. And continuing along with our project, we next build the main board. And again, as I hinted earlier, there is a no board option called an economy option, which I cover in the documentation package, but I'm not going to cover in the video. And this is pretty straightforward. Here is the dimmer driver. And then we have the remote receiver. Now when you get the remote receiver, you shouldn't have to do anything to it, but if you want to program other transmitters to it, you can do so. And again, I'll explain that in the web page. And we have a fuse here and a TVS diode, which by now you should understand that I use those in most all of my projects. And then we have the capacitor here that we had to mount under the board, and this is an alternate mounting configuration. And the reason we had to do that is the capacitor was too tall to fit on the top side of the board and yet be under the standoffs so it would be sticking out too far. And finally the potentiometer and this is a 5 kilo ohm potentiometer as recommended by the manufacturer of the dimmer. However I went to a logarithmic taper instead of a linear taper and again in my website I go into in-depth on these potentiometers and why you'd want to go with a different one. And now we come to our final assembly First up is mount a rocker switch. Make sure that you got the right side up that you want. And with this one, I've got a brushed aluminum. Once you put this in, it's not impossible to get out, but it's fairly difficult. And that just snaps in like that. And then we want our LED indicator. And that pushes in. And I've installed the lighting that I selected for this project. And on the bottom you can see where I use standoffs on one side and there's actually fiber washers on the other. And on this side I've got the on-off switch with the little brackets and washers under the nuts. And to mount the circuit board we will run both sets of wires through the hole in the board. And then the board should fit through the hole that we have for the potentiometer. And then finally we will secure the board with some M3 hardware. And now we're down to the final steps of the final assembly. I've connected both LED fixtures here and here, paying attention to the narrow pointing to the minus side on the board. Then we have connected the pilot LED. And then the rocker switch to the three pads here. And all we need to do now is to plug in the two boards together. We have made a harness and this will actually go into the wiring of the RV and that will plug into the switchboard. And let's flip it back over. Put our washer on as well as our nut. Tighten it down. Put our nice knob on. Now what we need is a source of 12 volts. Turn the halo light on and we can see lights turn on and off. Lights turn on. LED comes on which signifies that our remote is active. Then we can hit the remote and then we can dim the lights. And then 
turn it off, on and off with a remote. Now you'll see the LED is on this side and on the production board the LED will be on this side. And the LED again tells me that the remote is active and then of course the center is off.